and a very warm welcome to all of you watching us from wherever you are around the world. Welcome to Renault eWays, a unique event dedicated to the electric mobility of today and tomorrow. An event that uh, brings together men and women who are taking tangible actions to meet the challenges towards zero emissions. We're here today in Hangar Y, which is an industrial building just outside of Paris in Meudon. And connected with us today from Rotterdam, Netherlands, Dan Rosegaard. He is an artist, an innovator, and the founder of Studio Rosegaard. Dan, can you hear us? How are you doing? Yeah, all good. Yeah. Fantastic. You, you, you seem like a good, uh, you seem to be like in a good venue. Yeah, yeah the place is yeah, absolutely, cool. absolutely amazing. And here, the nice. first electric Zeppelin flight took place in 1884. So it's a very symbolic place for wow. electric energy. It's absolutely amazing. Um, so Dan, as, you, as the name suggests, Renault eWays aims to explore and open up to new ways of thinking, smart and positive mobility solutions, new ways of driving, of course, new ways of designing and pairing city mobility and sustainability, of course. And cities mobility, sustainability, a matter of design is the title of our talk uh, today. So first up, Dan, uh, for, what, for you, what does um, the car, what place does the car hold in tomorrow's city? Oh, the car is, um, is a space, eh? is in a way your own bubble, your own space uh, that keeps you safe, that in a way takes care of you, that, that, that moves you around. Um, so I think it becomes more and more sort of almost like a second skin in a way uh, that you can use whenever you want, that maybe you don't even own it, but you more share it. And I'm really interested in not just the object itself, although it's beautiful, but also the connectivity with the rest of the city and the rest of the landscape. As the car is becoming smarter and smarter, what about the rest of the world? What about the highway? So from your point of view, what are the best solutions to improve, Dan, ways of driving? What part can design play in road safety, for example? Well, I think uh, I remember in 2013, 2014, we started to work on smart highways. Eh? As the car is smarter, how can we make these new connections? So we started to work on highways which would charge electrical cars. You would drive over it. Or here, uh, highways which charge at daytime via the sun and would glow up at night up to eight hours. This has been realized in several countries. Uh, or here, snowflakes, uh, sort of thermosensitive ink. So when the road is slippery, the ink would change color so you could see that the road is dangerous or safe. Or here, dynamic lighting and why do we have street lights burning the whole night when nobody's there just put the lights on when it's there um, or here using the draft of cars uh, to generate uh, light uh, with little uh, simple ventilators oh yeah and here this is my favorite one the roads which charge electrical cars when you drive over them and um, yeah i would love to, to team up with you guys uh, to, from paris uh, airport to downtown um, we can design cars, but of course we can also design highways. Yeah, I think that kind of connectivity is for me the way to be future-proof. Great. Well, we'll take a note on that one, Dan. Uh, let's talk about <laughs> the subject of, uh, of sustainability. How can mobility help reduce pollution and face climate change? It's, these are difficult times. Well, I think, you know, for me, the future values of our city, uh, of course, are technology driven, but okay but also value-driven, purpose-driven. Eh? So clean air, clean water, clean energy. And I think the, the, the electric car and uh, the, the, the cars that you've been launching and that you will launch in the future uh, include those factors. And I think that, that is super important. But I think most important this is that, that the places um, that you feel connected with, eh? with the object, with the city you inhale, and uh, that somehow the, the car and the road is also good for you, that it's not a threat or has bad side effects, but is, is, yeah, is, is human. And I think the role of design is to make those kind of bold proposals, team up with people, uh, experts from the industry like you, and then um, make it happen, yeah. Um, you've been working on some quite amazing projects. I mean, I've been on, your, uh, on the internet looking at what you've been doing. Um, uh, let's talk about the Gates of Light. Uh, ah, it's yeah. very exciting. Tell us all about it. Yeah. Yeah, so that's really interesting. Again, the relationship between the car and the landscape. So when you have headlights, eh, normally you just beam the light and the light is sort of waste. Eh? You, you, you mm -hmm. see it in, from your car, um, but the rest of the surrounding is sort of mute. So what you see here is a project called Gates of Light, where we renovated these very, very famous floodgates. Eh? They uh, are protecting the Netherlands uh, from uh, drowning. So these are very famous on a very famous dike. 
basically this is our Eiffel Tower. So that this is how you can see. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and we, we, we got a chance to, to renovate and make them more iconic. Um, and they're enhanced with a sort of retro reflective layer, sort of micro prismas. So based on the headlights of the car, the buildings become illuminated. Um, so suddenly you have an energy neutral, light emitting landscape, no batteries, no solar panel, the rain, the rain keeps it clean. Um, just using the headlights of the car and making them reflective. And it also has an advantage when there are no cars, there's no light, there's no light pollution, yeah, which is better for the animals and the trees. Um, so I think that kind of connectivity between the car and the world around us and sort of making that more smart and more sustainable is really the way to go. And uh, I mean, this, is, this has been out there for many years. I mean, uh, this is for me, the, the street light of the future, yeah. Is this, uh, this kind of technology being uh, replicated elsewhere on other projects? Yeah, yeah, I think it's innovation. Eh? So in the beginning, people are always a bit, you know, is it allowed, is it possible? Yeah. And once you've finally done it, everybody says, that's a good idea. Why are you not doing it everywhere? <laughs> so that in innovation is also, people have to get used to new ideas and that's okay. So yeah, it's inspired by the wing of the butterfly, eh? which, which doesn't use a toxic pigment, but is actually reflective. And that's mm. why the wing of a butterfly always remains vivid. So yeah, uh, these kind of projects are pioneering, but mm. the knowledge, the same like fashion, eh? first it's haute couture, eh? beautiful, mm. catwalk, <laughs> Paris, and then it ends up in the pret-a-porter t-shirt uh, that I'm wearing now. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this, this will be further developed as Streetlight. And uh, yeah, I think that will, be, uh, that will be really a step forward, yeah. Mm. Can you, I think it's really interesting when you give us examples of things that you're actually working on. Have you got any more sort of examples of, of stuff that's happening, exciting stuff at the moment? Oh, you, you, yeah, but then we have to take another two hours, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, just one or two, you know? Yeah, exactly. We're here in, um, in Rotterdam in a dream factory. So it's a, it's a design firm filled with ideas, with, with designers, with engineers. And mm. we're completely uh, driven by, not by only technology, but by curiosity. Um, one famous project that we're pushing now uh, are actually uh, paths. Eh? So we talk about highways, but also the bicycle path. We made this famous Van Gogh bicycle path. Maybe you can show that one as well. Um, it's a, you know, these glow in the dark little stars that you had in the ceiling. On the ceiling, were, yeah. Oh, in kids' rooms. Yeah. yeah. Were, exactly. Yeah. So they charge at daytime and glow at night. And we made this famous bicycle path, which charge at daytime and glows at night. Maybe you can show the, the images on the screen. Right. Yeah, here. Yeah, and we have. This is an area where Van Gogh actually lived and worked. Eh? So he, he walked these grounds in 1883. Before uh, and after this, he, he went to, well, to your country, to France, mm -hmm. and made the famous Starry Night. So this was to celebrate his 125th anniversary, appreciate history. But it's also a statement about, you know, future green energy. So we're applying this larger scale Mm -hmm. uh, for, for highways, for paths. Um, so you'll see more of these kind of, you know, yeah, urban stories, urban landscape. Mm -hmm. Really trying mm -hmm. to, you know, I think if you push practical thinking to an extreme, you, it becomes poetry. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and I think that's what we have in common, you know. It's craftsmanship, it's engineering, mm -hmm. but, but there also needs to be a story, something that you really care about, that you get excited about, that, you, that you're curious about. And mm -hmm. I feel that that's my job or that's our job. Yeah. yeah. When, where, can, where can we see the Van Gogh, Van, Gogh, Van Gogh Park? Where is it exactly? Uh, it's in Eindhoven, so it's like an hour and a half from Amsterdam, and it's public space. Uh, you don't have to buy a ticket. It's open for every night, and it really becomes a hotspot for teenagers, like a first date, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so you first go to cinema, and then you take a stroll, and, well, you do what you do on a first date. I don't know. But yeah. uh, so, so it's really beautiful to... Um, to create these places of connectivity. And I think when we talk about mobility, uh, um, yes, the car is really important and, and, and green and full electric, absolutely, uh, and hybrid. But I think also the whole ecosystem of, of highways, of storytelling, of experience, uh, of making it more iconic is I think uh, as important as well. So I think that that's, that's the future of mobility in my opinion. And that's the, the, the job of an artist, is it? To give us that sort of vision and to make us dream through the innovations that you're making? Well, I mean, I start the project and I, I end them. Eh? Uh, in the <laughs> meantime, of course, I'm surrounded by people who are way smarter than me, and that, that's, <laughs> that's a good thing, eh? that I, I cherish that. 
Um, mm. So yeah, I mean, my job is to to you know, if we cannot imagine the future, we won't get there, right? Mm. Uh, sure. The same like uh, the, the, you said, you were in a place now where the first Zeppelin was made or launched. Yeah, the, the Zeppelins yeah. were stocked here, and the first flight, uh, the first Zeppelin electric powered yeah. Zeppelin, flew from here in 1884. That's so, I mean, that's, that's amazing. So we, we, we first have to imagine the future and only then we can construct it and engineer it. So yeah, so I see it as my job to trigger that curiosity um, and then team up with, with, with some good people and, uh, and make it happen. You know? So like art is a trigger, it's like uh, inspiring science? Yeah, art is an activator uh, to, to activate curiosity, to activate science. And in the end, it's also about making stuff, eh? like the car you have on, the, on your right there. It's about showing and look, it can be done. Um, and I think that that inspires people and that activates people, you know? And uh, I think that's, especially in a time like this, is, is more important than, than ever, yeah. Um, on a more personal note, and this will be my last question, Dan, um, what is uh, the most important matter for, uh, for an architect today? Uh, oh. That's a, so it's uh, a wide, large question. Yeah. That's a wide. Yeah. Can you? Can you? I mean, I can give you a two-hour answer on that. Can yeah. You, can you? Can you? Can you be a little bit more specific, or or you want? Well, what sort of maybe preoccupies you? What are you thinking about? What What's uh, your obsession at the moment, as far as well, like um, mobility well, or I the future is concerned? Well, look, the way we have to interact. You know, we live in a world where of of COVID, eh, of coronavirus, yeah. uh, where suddenly our public spaces are surrounded by plastic barriers, distance stickers, uh, new regulations, and of course, this is necessary. But at the same time, I also think a lot of it is unconscious design. Eh? It's sort of you know added through the time, and so I think we should work together and and design the new normal. Try to find a new way of of balance between how we communicate, how we interact, and most of all, trigger curiosity. I feel sort of, right now we're sort of mute, we're sort of waiting, uh, but maybe the car in itself can be this sort of safety bubble yeah, to, to navigate through the future. So, you know, if you, if you ask me what triggers me is, yeah, let's, let's design the new normal. Let's not wait, but let's, let's activate and let's create. Okay, let's not wait, let's activate and create. That will be your last word. Thanks so much, Dan, for this uh, fabulous conversation. Uh, get to work. There's lots of amazing things to do. Uh, <laughs> great to have had you with us. Uh, goodbye and thanks again. If you want to follow all of our content, it's on our website, eways.group.reno.com. Thank you very much. And thanks again, Dan. Dan, goodbye.